Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mr. Brian Shaw. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2021 Bison Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. We're glad we could finally have this. It is a little bit longer than we would have wanted to to induct this 49th class, but we're so glad to see a full room of people full of not only alumni, but also many of our student athletes as well. My name is Brian Sean. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And at this time, I'd like to introduce from the NDSU football team, Austin Avery, to deliver today's invocation. Let's pray. Father, you are good, you are holy, you are powerful, and you are merciful. We thank you for giving us this day that you have made. We are so grateful for this time together as a Bison family and for the people who have took the time to organize this event. We want to lift up the new members being inducted today and our current members. We thank you for the blessings you have given them in ability and the impact they have made here at NDSU. Lord, in this time, remind us of the sacrifice of your son Jesus on the cross, paying the penalty for our sin so that through faith, we can be in relationship with you. Without him, none of this is possible. Soften our hearts and allow this truth to impact us daily. Bless this time and fellowship and bless this food to our bodies. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you, Austin, who has also been on the Missouri Valley Conference honor roll every year he's been here. So congratulations on a great career and a great time as a student athlete here at North Dakota State. Thanks to the Holiday Inn for catering today's event. Please enjoy your meal and we'll be back with you at noon. Well, good to have you all. Hopefully everybody is close to getting their food here. Thanks to our wait staff. Uh, for getting everybody fed here today, and it's great to see all of you once again. And a welcome again to the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame ceremony here in 2021. Excited to get the 49th class of inductees honored here today. It is homecoming week at North Dakota State. It's a very busy weekend here, and at this time it is my pleasure to introduce the president of North Dakota State University, Dean Bershani. Thank you, Brian. It is great to see everybody in person in this room for this celebration. This, anybody that knows me knows that I love just about everything having to do with NDSU. I'm, I'm leaving out faculty senate meetings, but other than that, um, this place epitomizes what's great about a university. The, the intellectual achievement, the athletic achievements, the personal achievements. This event is a distillation of all that is the best about NDSU. Now, cut me some slack and don't think about Jack Mon for just a minute when I say that. But the truth is, the people in this room are the distillation of all of those attributes, academic achievement, athletic achievement, and personal achievement. You're what I brag about when I go to meetings of presidents from around the nation and the statistics and the performance that I'm able to point to and demonstrate that happens at NDSU leave everyone else embarrassed by their university. That doesn't matter at what level or what size of university I'm talking about. Let's get on with a ceremony that recognizes exactly what I'm talking about. And it's my pleasure at this point to introduce our absolutely outstanding athletic director, Matt Larson. Thanks, President Bashani, and, and welcome, and thank you all for joining us today. Each year, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony is an event that I look forward to more than any other. No other ceremony or game throughout the year more greatly emphasizes the power and tradition of Bison Athletics. The current Hall of Fame members represent the best of the best that have worn a Bison uniform and have helped laid an un incredible foundation that today's student athletes are fortunate to compete upon. This year's class is no different. A special welcome home to Lindsay, Chuck, Andrew, Nick, Jill, Nicole, 
and Don, and I know Andy's looking down with a big smile clad in green and gold on us today. Before I make a few brief remarks, there are a few people that I would like to recognize and thank for their support throughout the year and in making today possible. President Bershani, who we just heard from, and members of his cabinet who are here in attendance today, thanks for your leadership on campus, your consistent attendance at athletic events throughout the year, but also for your belief in our coaches, our student athletes, and our staff. You truly understand and support the important role that athletics plays here at NDSU. Our Hall of Fame committee, in particular Lee Peterson, Ryan Peralt, and Helena Johnston, each of you continually strive to make this a first class and memorable event for all of our inductees. There are a lot of people today that, that were involved in making today such a success and a seamless process. Livewire for the audio, visual, and effects, the Holiday Inn for the outstanding meal, and from athletics, Cole Hine, Scott Walken, Paul Wixo, Kate Kineski, Jared Franick, and Seth Hyman, Heinen. Our athletic staff and coaches, this is a special group of people that I have the fortune of working side by side with every day. Their passion for NDSU and our student athletes is evident in everything they do. They're the reason Bison Athletics is such a special place. To our current student athletes in attendance today, thanks all, thank you all for your dedication and commitment to Bison Athletics. During your time at NDSU, you've served as role models to young people in the community and to your peers on campus. Today, you get to meet role models that, like you, were successful during their time at NDSU, but now have used those experiences and lessons learned to be successful in life. And finally, our current Hall of Fame members, I ask that you please stand and be recognized. All of our current Hall of Famers, please stand. I know there's a number that are here today. Your attendance here today signifies the importance of this event. After all, you are our foundation, our history, and our tradition. It's great to have you back in Fargo to celebrate this year's class. These past 18 months have been some of the most challenging in our history. I can honestly say I've learned more about Bison Athletics, our staff, our coaches, and our student athletes during this time than I have in my previous six years here at NDSU. I'm a firm believer that true character is revealed during times of adversity. I watched our staff work through a global pandemic and manage significant budget impacts, all with focus on providing an opportunity for our teams to compete while ensuring their health and safety was always at the forefront. Never once was there a complaint or an excuse, but instead a steady resolve and focus that we were going to get through this together. This past year, our student athletes were constantly tested literally and figuratively, and faced with extreme adversity, whether it was 6 a.m. testing, contact tracing, missing games, canceled games, wearing masks, high flex learning. And on each occasion, their leadership rose to the top and at a time when it was needed most. There's no doubt in my mind that we will forever be stronger and more resilient because of the experiences of the last 18 months. Our character, leadership, and bison pride may share that. Today, we induct eight new members into the NDSU Athletics Hall of Fame who fully understand and possess great character and an unwavering bison pride. This year's class has a long list of accomplishments. 39 All-America honors, three individual national champions, two team national championships, two NCAA postgraduate scholarship recipients, a National Hall of Fame inductee, and a 60, not 16, 60-time Coach of the Year recipient and the NTA Woman of the Year for North Dakota. This is truly an outstanding group. Not only have our inductees excelled in their sport, but their different stories represent the levels of excellence throughout Bison Athletics. Whether it was individual efforts that garnered national success or being part of a team coming together to reach the pinnacle of their sport, each of them performed at the highest of levels and are now a permanent part of the fabric of NDSU athletics history. I'm honored to welcome each of you into the Bison Athletics Hall of Fame as the class of 2021. Congratulations, Lindsay, Chuck, Andrew, Andy, 
Nick, Jill, Nicole, and Don, and a very special congratulations and welcome to the Noel and Olsonowski families. Shortly after being notified of our Hall of Fame selection, Andy Noel Olsonowski succumbed to her five-year battle with cancer. She exhibited the same strength, determination, and drive during her fight with cancer as she did competing for the bison. Not only will her memory live on through our family and our community, but now she will forever be remembered as a member of this Hall of Fame. Thanks again for joining us today. Enjoy the ceremony and go Bison. And now we are ready to add eight outstanding individuals to the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame. A two-time Minnesota state champion in the long jump and 300 meter hurdles, she came to the Bison from Stephen Argyle Central High School, where she was the first female athlete inducted into the school's athletic Hall of Fame. She was a seven-time NCAA Division II All-American, and NDSU's only four-time All-American in the outdoor heptathlon including fifth place national finishes each of her final two seasons. She broke the school record for the heptathlon set by the Bison Hall of Famer Lisa Ristow with a score of 5,294 points at the North Central Conference Championship, a mark that will rank fifth in school history to this day. A four-time NCAA champion, she won back-to-back -back titles in the indoor pentathlon and the 400 meter relay in 2000 and 2001. After graduating from NDSU in 2001 with a degree in physical education, she married her husband, Mark, and was a dedicated mother to their four children, Noel, Aaron, Ryan, and Kate, until, as Matt mentioned, her nearly five-year battle with brain cancer ended in June of 2020. Before passing, she was presented with the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame Award by her coach and fellow Hall of Famer, Jerry Gores. Her legacy lives on in the NDSU track and field program. Established shortly after NDSU's move to Division I, the Andy Knoll Award is still presented weekly to a team member who demonstrates hard work and goes above and beyond in contributing to the team. Without further ado, it is my time and it is time to add to the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame, Andy Noel Olsonowski. Accepting on Andy's behalf is her husband, Mark, joined by their four children. I got my Kleenex. We'll see how I do up here. I'm telling everybody I haven't read through this yet without crying, but maybe today's the day. Maybe I got a little Andy strength in me. Uh, last night I was at the uh, NDSU uh, evening of distinction and I was visiting with Matt Larson. If you're a Bison fan, which everybody in here should be, if you're not, wrong room. But I had the privilege, I had a buddy get inducted into the Hall of Fame to the school that's in North Dakota that's about 80 miles north of here last weekend. And I know nobody's that competitive in the sports world, but the crowd is at least twice as big in here as it was up there. But uh, to, to that point, what's interesting is how every Hall of Famer got up there and talked, not about NDSU, but the school that was south of them about 80 miles. and. Ultimately, as I heard everybody speak as a Hall of Famer up there, it was about the tone and the bar that NDSU set. Because they look, in my opinion, what I heard that weekend, last weekend, was that it's all the Hall of Famers that are getting inducted today and all the Hall of Famers that have been inducted already at this point, you've set a very high bar uh, for the state of North Dakota and the university system. And I think UND is kind of chasing that right now. So, NDSU, congratulations for all your success and congratulations to all the Hall of Famers. So, I get to talk about a great topic today. My wife, uh, love of my life, she's an amazing human being. And 
you know, I got the note and I'm reading about all our accomplishments in track and field. And I was a super fan. I didn't go to NDSU, but I was talking to Steph Kelly last night and she let me know that I'm an official bison because I married into it. But her accomplishments and, you know, a four-time uh, All-American in the heptathlon, and I thought I would read those off because everybody hears heptathlon, but you don't know the events she does. And Andy stood on a good day five foot three inches tall. And I always said she was 5'2", but she always tried to get to 5'4". So uh, the, the seven events that I have Tathlon is, is the first day you do 100 meter hurdles, the high jump, shot put, and then the 200 meter. The second day you do the long jump, the javelin, and the 800 meters. And she uh, was amazing because she didn't do all those events in high school, but she learned and, and uh, trained hard to, to do those events. And, you can ask Ryan Godfrey and Stevie Keller about this later when she took fifth place in nationals as a senior. She took fifth place in the nationals with a pulled hamstring. And I still remember watching her grit and her drive and determination. And uh, it's, it was pretty incredible just watching her, uh, her compete and the, the, the attitude and the determination she had. And she had that in life. So. Now, as I get into what I actually have script, because if I didn't script it, I could get up here and talk forever, but these four amazing people sitting next to me, as Andy and I have been blessed, are our four greatest gifts, and I want to introduce our children. We've got our son, Noel, who's 17, Aaron, who's 15, Ryan, who's 13, and Kate, our beautiful little 10-year-old, and she's got her bison yellow dress on, and this makes up our family. Andy was big on family. Andy loved her family deeply, and the NDSU track team was a part of that family. Strong bonds of friendship formed during Andy's track days. The NDSU Bison track and field chapter of Andy's life was one of her greatest chapters because it's a large part of what molded her into the person she became on her life's journey. Andy defined excellence. She had the spirit of a champion. She never seemed to compete with others, but her biggest competition always seemed to be herself. I think that's a champion spirit. It's a spirit that fuels them to pursue personal excellence in all areas of their life. And this was Andy. She held herself responsible and accountable to being the best at everything she focused on, track and field at North Dakota State, or a mom. She just focused on being the best. I think of track and field as an individual sport, but Andy and North Dakota State believed differently. Andy loved and always recognized the fact that she was a part of something bigger than herself. It was about Andy doing her best each day to help the North Dakota State women's track team be their best. Andy credits her teammates and coaches for all their hard work, their dedication, their coaching knowledge, and the support instead of looking for the spotlight and talking about what she did. She always remained humble and pointed to the spotlight or pointed the spotlight on others for their success, excuse me, for her success at NDSU. Andy usually at the track, was usually at the track early to start a multi-event on the weekend, and then she'd be involved in some sort of main part of the track meet doing an additional one to three events. And then finally, if she wasn't in the final 400 meter relay, she would be actively cheering her teammates on. She'd usually run the morning event, come give her hugs to the friends and family there watching her compete, and then she'd say, okay, I need to go. I gotta go cheer on my teammates, and she'd be off. And then came Andy's battle with cancer. Andy knew that her cancer race would require the same hard work, dedication, mental and spiritual focus that a heptathlon required. Not only did Andy need to be committed, but she also knew she needed a great support team surrounding her. It was the same thing she learned being on the team at North Dakota State that she took with her now to compete against this disease in the game of life. On June 23rd, 2020, Andy received the ultimate trophy we all hope to gain one day and be told by the world's greatest coach, well done, good and faithful servant. Andy found out about the Hall of Fame as you saw in the video uh, before she passed. And I remember the day I got the call from Jerry. She was actually laying in a hospital bed at Sanford. And I walked in and just got off the phone with Jerry. And she was having trouble uh, in a lot of areas, but she usually had about a half hour or so during the day that was good. And I remember mentioning it to her and I said, hey, I got some news. You're inducted into the Hall of Fame. And she goes, that's so cool. 
And then, of course, because I'm a kind of joke around every once in a while, she goes, are you being serious with me? And she gave me this look. I just still, to this day, think of the look she gave me. And she didn't believe me at first. But So again, uh, what an honor to be standing up here and uh, representing her today. But Jerry and Jill came to our house about two weeks before Andy passed. And that was the video you saw and uh, recognize Andy for the Hall of Fame achievement. And I still, it's amazing to think back on that day, and it was obviously the power of God is what I believe. But she hadn't walked on her own for about two weeks. And she sat up in bed when Jerry got there, and she said, I'm going to walk on my own. And it just is amazing to think. She literally pushed herself up and out of bed, which she hadn't done for two weeks. She stood up, turned around, and walked down the hallway and gave Jerry a big hug. And this is literally the last time she ever walked on her own or got out of bed again. It was June 9th. So Andy knows she's getting this award today, and Andy wanted to share a few words to put a wrap on this speech and to let you know that she's here in spirit. The following words come from my wife Andy's heart and soul. Please do your best to visualize her in front of you today. I, Andy Knoll, Olsonowski, am so excited to be with you today in spirit and to honor so many great North Dakota State Bison. To my husband, our children, my mom, Peg, my dad, Jeff, my brother, Matt, niece, Maddie, my in-laws, Jerry and Carol Olsonowski, and my dear friend, Natalie Mickelson, I want to say thank you for being my great teammates for so many years, but especially those final days of my life here on earth. This award is dedicated to you. It's pretty cool that they've started a scholarship in my name. Thank you to Steph Kelly for helping set that up, to Andrea Travnik and Jill thieler Schleckaway for your matching gift, and to many others for supporting my scholarship. This is so awesome that the scholarship will be given to future North Dakota State women track and field athletes just like me. To my friend, Jill thieler Schleckaway, to my friend, roommate, teammate, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. Keep being a champion in life. You're doing an amazing job with those three boys. Being a full-time mom is not easy work, but you're rocking it. It's fun to watch those boys of yours grow up. Andy Moen, great name, Andy. And awesome job on your achievements. I knew you'd be a North Dakota State Hall of Famer when you started chasing after your wife, Rachel. Rachel made you a Hall of Famer. Coach Lars, congrats. And thank you for being a rock and impacting so many young men and women, uh, of the bison men and women all these years. You're a stud. But don't forget, Lars, that behind every great man is a great woman. Love you, Desi. And I love watching your girls and their families thrive in life. Thank you to all my coaches over the years, to Jerry Gores for recruiting me to be a bison, Ryan Godfrey for stepping up when it was needed, Stevie Keller and Brent Palmer, thank you for the training sessions and the guidance each day of practice. And sorry for those not mentioned here today, but know that I love you all, and I'm grateful that you were a part of my NDSU track story. You all rock. So I grew up in Stephen, Minnesota, a town of about 600 people. My small little town only had a gravel track, and I usually did the sprint workouts on paved streets in town. I enjoyed the sports and the competition that it provided. After graduating, of course, I came to North Dakota State, joined the track team, and I learned many lessons from my teammates, my coaches, the staff, and the administrators. Every one of you is like family to me. My sports background was where I learned a lot of my disciplines, my sacrifices, how to get better through failure, and I learned how to be a part of a team. That sure came in handy when I was instantly thrown into the fight of my life with my cancer battle. I had not been feeling very well, and my memory was foggy, in general, I just had a hard time focusing. I figured my allergies were acting up in the fall. But on September 11th, 2015, my husband brought me into the emergency room at Sanford. There, the doctor did an MRI brain scan and the doctor gave me the news. The doctor came in and told me I had a golf ball sized tumor in the center of my brain, just above my brain stem. When you hear news like this and it hits you like a freight train, how would you react? Who would you believe in? And who would you trust with your life? As a mom, helping my kids get through this obstacle in our lives did not come easy. 
It was more important than ever for me to trust in God's race for me here now on planet Earth. It wasn't time for me to feel sorry for myself, get mad, get angry, but again, that's a lot easier said than done. I definitely had some tough moments on the journey. We teach our kids that either way, it's our job to not feel sorry for ourselves, to be responsible, to take another step, to keep going, and remember to be patient, kind, honest, and to love each other by trusting in God's plan for our lives. Our family motto and Andy's motto has always been to do your best and let God do the rest. I feel that my time I have been given and the lessons I've been able to teach others and myself have been a miracle. I feel like it's my responsibility to share the power of God in my life to others. Even though I'm not physically present here today, know that I'm here in spirit, enjoying every moment and cheering each of you on in your own race. North Dakota State blessed me with so many great friends and memories. Those memories will live on throughout all of you for generations to come. The great bison success stories will continue from generation to generation. I am so proud to be a bison, once a bison, always a bison, and the herd runs strong in heaven. Love always, Andy. And I know we've heard the story most likely before about the numbers on our headstone when we die. When we die, we have two numbers, the year we were born and the year that we die. Those numbers are separated by a little dash. You don't get to decide either of those numbers, but what you do get to decide is what you do with your dash. I'm honored to share with you today as the husband of my late wife, Andy Noel Olsonowski, to say that she ran her dash well. I know Andy's spirit is nudging me every day to continue to run my own race as best as I can. Andy's competition days in life were over here on earth but she's sitting up in heaven as our biggest cheerleaders. I think she's cheering us all on with that famous saying, do your best and let God do the rest. We as a family have started a women's track and field scholarship in Andy's name. If you would like to donate to that women's scholarship in memory of Andy, please speak with Steph Kelly or call the North Dakota State Athletic Department directly and they'll assist you with donating to Andy's scholarship. I give a huge thank you today on behalf of Andy Noel Olsonowski and her entire family for this great honor. She would be up here smiling ear to ear and proud to be standing accepting this award. I know she's watching from up above. God bless each and every one of you. Go Bison. Well done, Mark. It's good to see Mark. I haven't seen him in over 10 years. Uh, wonderful job. Our next inductee is a 10-time letter winner in softball, basketball, and volleyball, and was a part of two state championship teams in volleyball and four in softball for C.M. Russell High School in Great Falls, Montana, where her softball jersey number was retired in 2001. When I was reading through this last night, my wife, I'm like, can you just help me read through this? I brought this part, as soon as I read this part, her face just got this scowl. And then I realized she went to Great Falls High. So she did not like CM Russell High School. And she was there the exact same time that Lindsay was there. So she still has a little bit of, so anyway, she didn't like that part. She goes, just skip all that. I said, okay. She led North Dakota State to four NCAA tournaments, including a pair of North Central Region Championships, a third place national finish in 2003, and fifth place finish in 2002. And ESU won the 2002 North Central Conference Tournament and compiled a 180 and 38 record during her career. She was a three-time Division II All-American, four-time All-North Central Conference Region Pick, three-time North Central Conference Player of the Year, and four-time All-NCC Pick. Still the program's all-time leader with over 1,000 strikeouts, 1,019. She's also number one on the NDSU career charts with 49 shutouts, a 1.11 ERA, an opponent batting average of 177, and an average of 8.43 strikeouts per contest. 
She pitched three no-hitters tied for first at North Dakota State and seven career saves and set school records with 137 pitching appearances and 117 starts. And she did damage at the plate, too. A career 317 hitter with 25 home runs and 98 RBIs, she finished fourth and still ranks 10th on the NDSU career home run list chart. After graduating from NDSU in 2004 with a degree in physical education, she was a graduate assistant for NDSU softball under head coach Darren Mueller before starting a teaching career in her hometown. She has taught health enhancement the past 15 years at CM Russell High School, where she spent four years as an assistant coach in volleyball and softball and nine as the school's head softball coach. She was part of four more state championship softball teams and was inducted into the Montana High School Association Athletic Hall of Fame in 2018. She recently stepped away from coaching to spend more time with her family, which includes husband Brett and three children, Ellison, Riley, and Jace. It's our pleasure to introduce for the induction into the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame, Lindsey Graham Gustafson. That was a tough one to follow, but wow, what a message that Mark gave us today. And what an honor. I, I got to watch Andy run because some of my roommates in college ran with her, and it was just, she was amazing. And her fight with cancer just said it all of the person that she was. And whew. So I speak every day in front of my sophomores, but this is a lot to, to have to do. Um, I've sat and read my speech over and over again and changed a million things, but I need to stick to it or else I'm going to stray far away. But I remember sitting in the audience at this celebration 20 years ago as a SAC member, and today I'm truly honored and humbled to be standing amongst some of the greats of NDSU athletics, not only as athletes, but as people. Congratulations to all the inductees, and thank you to the Hall of Fame committee and the NDSU athletic staff for all your hard work to put on this amazing event. I think back as a kid and where it all started. We were at the softball fields most weekends watching my dad play, and if we weren't there, I was playing baseball in the neighborhood park with all the boys. It was there that I learned what it meant to have mental toughness and grit. Nobody cared if you went home crying, you, so you sucked it up and you played ball. My dad spent many hours in the front yard pitching with me. Both my parents were my coaches throughout my high school career, so it was tough when I decided to come 11 hours away from home and that they wouldn't be at all my games. But in the end, it was one of the best decisions of my life. I remember my friend and I rode the train out. We paid our way to come see NDSU. From the moment I stepped on campus and met the t team and the coaches, I knew this is where I wanted to be. I was just thankful that Mitch and Darren took a chance on a Montana kid. I wouldn't be standing up here today without my teammates, coaches, and parents. I was so lucky to have some of the very best. Sadly, my parents were on their way here yesterday from a 20-hour trek from uh, St. George, Utah, where my dad was still playing softball. And they came down with colds, and they thought, you bet, we better test on our way just in case. And they came back positive. So they're not here with me today. But that was normal. Almost every weekend, they were going between Oregon State, where my brother played baseball, or the Midwest, chasing me around the North Central Conference. They were both teachers, so they would leave on Thursday after school, drive all night to get here to our game on Friday, and leave Sunday when we finished, just to turn around and head back home and shower and get ready for school on Monday morning. They had been my biggest supporters every step of the way and molded me into the person I am today. Coming to the NDSU was even easier because I had my mom's family an hour away in Mayville. My grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins made it to as many games as possible and were always so supportive, and I'm grateful that they're here today. I want to say congratulations to my cousin Jeremy because tonight he's getting inducted into the Mayville State Hall of Fame for baseball, and he's here for me to support me today. And I know our grandparents would have loved to be here to support both of us today. They were our biggest fans, and everyone in the stands knew who Grandpa Harv was because he was a proud grandpa. When I came in as a freshman, the team had just won the 2000 National Championship the spring before, and two, three of those members are sitting in the audience today. I knew the expectations were high, and I loved the challenge. I will never forget the first week of practice. Our defense wasn't getting it done, and all of a sudden, Mitch threw his bat over the left field foul line. I thought to myself, what did I get myself into? Well, I settled right in after all the many 30-minute jogs around the Benson Bunker field house. I think my teammates actually hated the fact that I really liked to run. 
To think we had a stage to hit on and the gym floor as our practice field, it was truly amazing the success that these coaches were able to produce out of Fargo, North Dakota. I remember many times we were chipping ice off of our field just to be able to play in the afternoon. I was fortunate to have two-time All-American Julie Fromm as my teammate, teammate and mentor. She taught me her change-up the first week of practice, and it was a game-changer throughout my career. I remember my catcher. She was a senior at the time. I got to play one year with her, and that's Shelly Ryan, also a Hall of Famer. She gave me the middle finger as the indicator to hit the batter, and all I kept thinking is, why would I put someone on base for free? I knew, it sh I, I knew if I shook her off, I better get the jump done, and thankfully, I struck her out instead. I was pretty homesick that first year, but Shelly took me under her wing and was like a big sister to me. I felt bad for our three seniors that year because most of the year we were ranked number one, but we ended up losing in the regional tournament at home. We had something to prove that next year. We won our conference and regional tournament and made it to the national tournament. What an amazing experience, but it still wasn't the finish that we'd hoped. My junior season, we lost our pitching coach, Mike McLeod, to a courageous battle with cancer the morning of our first game. We went to visit him at the hospital before we left on our first road trip to Missouri, and we knew it was close, but he wouldn't let us cancel our trip. I remember walking out of my hotel room that morning, and the look on Darren's face said it all. He was the light of the team and was always there with a smile on his face regardless of his circumstances. He would bring us candy, he'd wear his funny wigs, he would take trips to the mound to crack a joke just so you would relax and throw. We were left without a pitching coach for the next two years, but Darren did a good job of stepping in, and as a pitching staff, we worked hard to help each other in the bullpen. That season, we played for Mike, and we ended up heading back to the national tournament, and we got third place. The fall of my senior year, we were headed to Sioux Falls for a tournament. I ended up sleeping through my alarm. Darren patiently, or impatiently, held the bus until I got there, as he knew I would probably drive my car down and meet them down there. But that day I sat in my street clothes and I was in charge of taking video of the games from the stands. Not fun as a senior, but it was a tough lesson to learn, but it's such a great one. It didn't matter who you were, we were all held accountable for our actions and he had high standards for all of us. Later that spring I was on the mound and my roommate Heather was playing center field. I threw a pitch and as soon as it came off the bat I knew it was long gone. I turned around to watch it sail over the fence and I was thinking, why is she sprinting after that ball that's gonna be 20 feet over the fence, and all of a sudden, bam, she runs into the fence and falls backwards on her butt. Thankfully, she was tough and got right back up. I'm not sure whose ego was hurt more at that moment, hers or mine, but that was just one of the examples of the sacrifices my teammates would make for each other. I don't get back to Fargo often enough, but it feels like home. It was so awesome to drive around and see all the changes yesterday. I got to watch the team practice yesterday afternoon and visit with Dries and Darren. It's always special when I get to come back and visit with them. There's a sense of pride when I walk on that field, and it makes you think of, about the ones that paved the way before us and the future that is ahead. I was talking to Matt today, and it was such an honor to meet him, and he said, my goal for this field is to be the best field in the country, and to have that support for a softball team is really incredible, and I just want to thank Matt, and you can see the NDS using good hands when you have a person like that in charge. But it brings back so many amazing memories that I will forever be grateful for. The list could go on. I was talking to some of my teammates today, and it's just, there's so many fun stories. We don't have enough time to say them all today, but I just am really grateful for all those memories. My coaches, Darren, you've been the pillar of NDSU softball since it started. Thank you for putting up with all of us girls all these years. I truly don't know how you do it. It's not an easy job. You and Jamie Trexel have no doubt made a Im huge impact on my life. They are some of the best of the best, and as you can see by the success they have created here. Being a coach myself, I've realized even more now the time, effort, and heart they put into our team and all the other teams to come. What they have sacrificed for the betterment of NDSU softball. They taught us a blue-collar work ethic that nothing is going to be handed to you. If you want something bad enough, you have to work, put the work in and trust in the process. And most of all, show up and compete day in and day out. They pushed us every single day to be better, not only as softball players, but as people. I learned compassion and to listen, so I didn't miss out on learning and growth opportunities. I was fortunate to be a grad assistant with them for the next two years transitioning into Division I. It was a huge learning curve, but it prepared me to go out on my own as a head coach back home. There were many times that I would call Darren or Jamie and ask for advice, and they were always willing to help, and that hasn't changed today. I think Darren's glad that he doesn't have to be on the road with me and I get hangry and he would literally like just get her some food. So 
but those were really fun times and amazing memories together with them. I've now retired from high school coaching in the true fashion of life, coming full circle. I'm now the parent coaching, shifting gears to coaching my own girls in U5-6 soccer. I don't have a clue about soccer, but I'm just winging it. They all say it takes a village, and I'm so thankful to have some of the best in my corner. Lynn Dorn and Jean Taylor, you couldn't have asked for two more supportive and caring athletic directors. They always took time to ask you how you were doing and genuinely cared about every athlete. Lois Larson was like our mom away from home. Not only did she do our laundry, but if you ever needed anything, she was always there to step in. Scott, Nikki, Jess, and all the other athletic traders played a huge role in not only injury for prevention, but for our mental health counseling. They got to hear all the drama on a daily basis. Thanks to Schwartzy for all the coverage of the games, the support staff, the administration, and to Bison Nation. We have the best fans, and I can't thank you enough for all of your support. It means so much to me to have Darren and Jerese here today, as well as Hall of Famers Nikki Gregg, Shelly Ryan, and Jenny Christians. I was sad I wasn't able to make any of theirs, being 11 hours away, but Jenny and I played all four years together, and you couldn't have asked for a more humble, hardworking, and genuine teammate than her. Thank you to my roommates, who made my college experience the absolute best. All of you are here today, and it means the world. Every year we still get together and we share the, share the same silly stories, but they never seem to get old. And I'm just thankful it's, it's a rare thing to have a group that still is as close as we are. Thank you to my best friends from Montana that made the trip out here and all the support that you've given me throughout all of my life. To my husband, Brett, I know it hasn't been easy being married to a bison when you're a Montana State Bobcat fan. I'm pretty relentless when it comes to the green and gold. He hears about it all the time. But I really appreciate you being here and supporting me and cheering on the bison for the weekend. It was a long trip out here with Ellie and Riley. We didn't get to bring our little guy. He's two, and it just would have been too much. But I'm thankful that they're here to experience what Bison Nation is all about. In order to, uh, I'm, um, I hope that I can continue instilling the life lessons in my own kids that I learned here as a bison. NDSU will always hold a very special place in my heart, and I'm so grateful to everyone that has made my experience the absolute best. Congrats to all the inductees, and it, I hope it's a great weekend for all of us. I'm so proud to be a part of this herd. Go Bison. Well, welcome. Making the long trek out, that's a long way. It's good to see you all here. Our next Sendecti was once called the all-time best closer in school history by Hall of Fame coach Bucky Mon with his pin with a 101 left in the third period of the 2001 national title bout clinched NDSU's fourth NCAA wrestling national championship. I always asked Bucky, didn't know a lot about wrestling until I got to Fargo, and I always asked Wesley why the, the matches with heavyweights were so low scoring. They're always like two to one, one nothing. He goes, in Bucky fashion, you know, everybody knows Bucky. Well, Brian, he told me, after about a minute, they're both just a couple of slimy lard balls, and no one can grab at each other, and that's kind of the gist of it. Sounded good enough to me, and very Bucky fashion, he could explain it to me, so I'll never forget that's how I learned what heavyweight wrestling was all about at the national level. He came back to win a North Central Conference Championship in 2002 and went on to his second straight NCAA heavyweight title. He was a four-time conference place winner and member of two conference and national championship teams. Inducted into the Division II Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2016, he posted a 70 and 22 career record with 36 pins at NDSU. During his back-to-back -back national championship years, he was 47 and four with 23 pins and a 23 and 0 mark in dual meets. Following his collegiate career, he placed fourth at the 2003 World Team Trials and qualified for the 2004 Olympic Team Trials, placing fourth at the 2012 Trials. He was a three-time senior level All-American. He came to NDSU from Hayfield, Minnesota, where he was a state champion on the mat and also earned all-conference honors in football and baseball. He spent time as an assistant wrestling coach at Byron High School and Rochester Community College where he was a part of a national championship team in 2014. A 2002 graduate of NDSU construction management program, he is the owner of a residential construction company in southern Minnesota. His family includes three daughters, Jade, Ruby, and Ivory. 
We are proud to welcome for induction into the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame, Nick Severson. Hello. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I guess uh, I'm very nervous. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank the NDSU Hall of, Hall of Fame Committee. This is a wonderful event, and I'm very honored to be a part of it. <clears throat> um, congratulations to all the, the other inductees. And uh, just kind of looking around, it's crazy to think, you know, all the years of hours and years of training that we as athletes have put in and uh, it's, it's, I hope people think this is inspiring. And uh, especially for my daughters, uh, which are active in sports and Jade, Ruby and Ivory. Um, <clears throat> NDS Youth Wrestling had a, a family atmosphere. Um, a lot of great memories and road trips with coaches, fans and teammates, uh, met a lot of great people. Um, I, I just want to, unfortunately here, but in the last year um, or so, NDSU wrestling family lost two, uh, two fans and two wrestling dads. And uh, I'd like to take a moment to honor Dave Nelson and Dave Fuller. Um, you'll be greatly missed. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Bucky Mon for taking a chance on me. Uh, I called myself, he took a chance on me. I was a, a Barron, Wisconsin, old timer tournament, last place finisher. And so my NDSU journey started in Barron, Wisconsin. <clears throat> I went out of high school, I went to Stout for two years. So I had a roommate that uh, decided, hey, let's go wrestle in this old timer tournament in Barron, Wisconsin. And I'm like, all right, I'm a couple years out, you know, young, still strong, whatever. So I go to this old timers tournament and uh, get drawn in and I get these two old guys. These two old guys, uh, I believe a couple of them, I believe both of them had to get a walker to go to the mat. So I'm thinking I'm gonna kick their butt and we're gonna go drink beers afterwards. Well, <clears throat> that, that is when I, the first time I experienced uh, old man strength. I wrestled twice and two guys, they kicked my butt. So at that moment, I, I'm very competitive. A lot of people know me. I'm very, at that moment, I, I was furious. I'm like, I go from doing well in high school, thinking I'm all done, and now I got beat out at an old-timers tournament. I'm furious. So I got instantly, the next day, I get on the phone, I start calling around for colleges that, are, that have an open spot for 197. NDSU was at college. I had no idea about the strong tradition that Bucky created. And uh, that, that strong tradition that Bucky created. And so I get here, we win a couple national championships. I, it's, it was crazy, I, I absolutely clueless. So I got up here and I, again, I, I'd like to thank you know, Bucky for giving me that opportunity and, and, and NDSU for letting me represent. Um, finally, uh, I'd like to, uh, I would like to thank my family, to my brothers and, and sisters. Uh, spent a lot of nights and weekends in sweaty gyms, sweaty wrestling rooms, most likely probably not by choice. Uh, you guys have always been my biggest fans. I couldn't have done it without you. And today, you continue to support me through good and bad. I love you guys. My mom and dad, I don't know where to start. I have three daughters now, it's very busy. And uh, my mom and dad worked very hard. And they worked sun up, sun down, we had five kids. They're trucking us all over the place. I wouldn't see them, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what time of the night or when it was, we'd hop in the car, they're taking us to sporting events. Um, they're always there for us. You created a lot of opportunities for me for which I'm internally grateful. I love you guys very much, and thanks for sharing this moment with me. Thanks.
our next honoree is already a two-time Hall of Famer inducted into the inaugural class of the Mitchell High School Hall of Fame in 2007 and the South Dakota Sports Hall of Fame in 2015. She was a 19-time Division II All-American runner, running the 400-meter dash and the 400 and 1600-meter relays, including the NDSU record-setting national championship 1600 relay team that helped the Bison win the 2002 Division II Indoor Team National Championship. A 12-time North Central Conference champion, she was MVP of the league's indoor meet as a freshman back in 1998, and a two-time NCC Outdoor MVP in 99 and 2002. As a sophomore, she won five titles in the 200, 400, triple jump, 400 relay, and 1600 relay to lead the Bison to the 1999 NCC Outdoor title. She set NDSU indoor records in the 55 meters, 60 meters, 400 meters, and 1600 meter relay, and also set school outdoor records in the 400, 400 relay, 800 relay, 1600 relay, and 3200 relay, and the sprint medley relay. A three-time COSIDA All-American, she earned two NCAA postgraduate scholarships, was named North Dakota's NCAA Woman of the Year, won the NCC Stan Marshall Award, and earned the Woody Hayes National Scholar Athlete Award. After graduating from NDSU in 2002 with a degree in business administration, she completed a master's degree in business administration and sports administration at Ohio University. She worked as a compliance coordinator at the University of Southern California, associate athletic director at the University of South Dakota, we'll forgive her for that one, and most recently was a community relations coordinator at Augustana University. She lives in Sioux Falls, South Dakota with her husband Todd and their three children, Gavin, Grant, and Jet. It's our pleasure to introduce for induction into the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame, Jill Thieler Schleckaway. Thank you so much. Um, so grateful to be here and to receive this Bison honor. Um, congratulations to each inductee. Um, I'm beyond blessed to be a part of um, this particular Hall of Fame um, class. I'm ever thankful that in the spring of 1997, Jerry Gores recruited me out of Mitchell, South Dakota, and I chose to head north up Interstate 29 to Fargo and Bison Track and Field to cross that border from South Dakota into North Dakota for college. It was one of the best decisions of my life. In my heart, I know that God directed me here to NDSU. The more easy, comfortable choice for college may have been Augustana, Augustana College at the time. Um, it was 60 miles east of Mitchell, close to my mom, or to head to my parents' alma mater at USD. I grew up going to games there. My dad had played basketball there in the 1960s, had a very successful career as a coyote. It was familiar, um, but the Lord had good plans for me here. On my recruiting visit, I knew it was the right place. I love this university, and it was a perfect fit for me in so many ways. Um, while here at NDSU, I found a personal relationship with Jesus, the most important part of my experiences up here in Fargo. It's the, it's the most precious gift to me and still the most important part of my life. I hear people talk these days about squad goals, and I have been very blessed with my squad. Um, my husband, Todd, is here. Um, he, he's from Oberg, South Dakota. He played basketball at the University of Sioux Falls and has a passion for coaching, which he gets to do with our son's teams, um, basketball, football so far. We have three little boys. Um, they are here. Gavin is 10, Grant is eight, and Jet is cheering right now for himself there. He is six full of spirit and spunk, and we love it. They are active and awesome, and I love being their mom. Um, my youngest, Jet, has already claimed that he gets to put mom's new trophy in his room. He's been telling me that for months, telling, when I told him about mom's big event. So we'll, he's excited about that, and we'll have to see. Um, my parents, Jack and Nancy Thieler, are here. They were my number one fans. I don't think they ever missed a track meet, no matter where it was. 
So I, of course, appreciated that so much. Um, my in-laws are here. They're wonderful people and supporters. Um, Jim and Marilyn Schluckaway from Moorbridge. Um, my father-in-law played basketball at Northern State, and actually my, our dads, my dad and, and Jim, played against each other in the same era, Northern State and the University of South Dakota. So that's some fun family history. Um, I appreciate them being here. I have some friends here also supporting me, and I appreciate it a lot. Um, and there are so many thank yous to be said for the, the people. That's what's been said so far, but that's what, when you put together something like this, that's what comes to mind at heart are the people. Um, thank you to my incredible coaches, Jerry Gores. Um, love and appreciate you and your friendship still. Um, Don Larson, you are a legend, Lars, and it's an honor to be inducted with you. Um, Brent Palmer was the interim for a period of time, um, and he did a great job, and I appreciated that. And I saw, I think, his, his parents here, too. Um, Ryan Godfrey then took the reins for the Bison and did such an awesome job taking the program from Division II into Division I. So um, Stevie Keller and staff, we continue to watch and cheer on, and we're just, um, we, I, when I say we, I mean myself, but also just the track and field alumni. We're so proud of the success on the track, how fast it's been, all our records are just busted. Um, and that's, that's, what it's, that's what's supposed to happen. And on the field and to the Olympics, how exciting was that this summer to watch um, Bison track and field represented um, on the, at the Olympic level. So just so tremendous. Proud of that beautiful indoor track facility. Um, wish I would, could have trained on that. Instead we ran around the Bison Sports Arena and had basketballs coming through the curtain while basketball practiced at the same time. But, um, we did what we could, and everyone, it, it's just part of the memories. It's great. Um, and the new outdoor track complex being built, so that's just going to be tremendous. Can't wait to see it and come up to meets. So bravo, Bison. Thank you for that, to the athletic department for the continued support for these uh, facilities, and um, we'll be cheering it on. It's just excellent. Um, thank you to the athletic training staff. I see Scott up front here, also a legend, let's be honest. Um, the strength staff. Always just so excellent. They're just excellence was all around us here, just the, with the professionalism and the way things were done so well when we were here, and I know that's continued. Um, thank you to Lynn, Lynn Dorn and to Jean Taylor as the administrators at the time, and I think Lindsay mentioned that also. They were um, just ex such excellent leaders, and um, they inspired my career path into college athletic administration. It was Gene Taylor that told me about Ohio University. He was familiar with the field and encouraged me to apply, and it, it was an excellent program for, for, for that field. So appreciated that from Gene, and we still follow his career down at, at Kansas State. Um, but I also want to step back and say thank you to, to Lynn, to Amy Ruley, um, to other women, Kelly Lehman, I saw her here, um, that were pioneers and leaders to grow the opportunities and the prominence of women's athletics here and but across the country, um, and that goes back to before, you know, I was even, we were even born, um, and I, I still don't take that for granted. Um, a quick story is that my mom and I have a very similar build, and she was fast. We used to race, and if she'd had the chance, I think she would have been up here in some college with these type of, like, type of stats, um, but back in Arlington, South Dakota, she graduated in 1964 from high school, there weren't any limited to none high school or college opportunities for girls at the time. She speaks of there being a field day at the end of the school year, and she and my aunt were really fast and athletic, and they'd win the broad jump in, the, in, the, in some of the races, but they couldn't move on with it. Um, but into the next decades, obviously, that grew, and I'm thankful for those opportunities and for um, the women and the men that grew the opportunities for women in athletics, and I hope we can continue to protect that. Um, thank you to um, Jeff Schwartz and the sports information staff. I continue to do excellent work, and I was so supportive. Um, one of the reasons I chose NDSU, I mean, amongst many, but when we came up for a recruiting visit, my parents and I were so impressed. That I believe at the time, um, Jeff's title was sports information director for women's athletics, and um, just the clear support and the um, communication about for women's sports that, versus the other visits I took, for example, to North Central Schools, didn't see that, that clear support in the late 90s for women. And um, thank you, Bison, because I, I know that has only continued to for men's and women's sports across the board. 
Um, thank you to the NDSU School of Business. Um, had excellent professors, got an awesome degree. I need to go see the School of Business. I've never been in the building when I was here. Um, we just kind of moved building to building for our classes. There wasn't a set business school. I need to go visit the, the beautiful new building. Look forward to that. Um, but most of all, thank you to my teammates. Uh, many here today, I won't be able to mention them all, but um, thank you so much, friends, those that came, we, that we came in together in the fall of 97, those ahead of us, um, Steph Kelly, Erin Jankard, I saw her here, they were here ahead of us, um, and those that came behind more. Just tremendous, um, loving, hardworking humans who inspired and supported the team daily. And that in the men's and women's programs, one neat thing about track and field, I think, is how the men's and women's programs have shared coaching and, and you really connect in that way. And that's, that's really special. It adds a lot. And the support across sports, too. I mean, as we went to each other's events and, um, in Weibel Hall, I was roommates with Jamie Berry and we got uh, usually matched with a different sport, freshman athlete, and that really helped making those connections and it was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, just speaking to the, that my squad goals were also really blessed while I was here. Thank you, Kristen Bachmeyer, Darcy Conway, they're here. Andrea Travnik, who was a soccer student athlete, but we kind of adopted her. Um, Andy and um, Darcy and Trav and I were in 901 Pavic Hall our sophomore year. And um, some different apartments and different spots too. So those amazing memories you make with teammates, roommates are so special. Unforgettable, really. Um, Tammy Broody, um, she is a special teammate and she sent me a message wishing she, she could be up here. They live in Florida. And when she's inducted soon, because I know she will be, I'll be hopefully here to cheer her on. But thank you, Coach Gores, for recruiting that very fast, strong, kind woman. She was the perfect training partner in the 400. And um, just so much fun to be around. I don't know if you know Tammy's personality, she's just, She's just such a fun, um, wonderful, strong, fast woman. Um, some of the favorite memories for all of us and for myself, Drake Relays, the national meets um, that we got to go to all over the country, the NCC meets, especially beating the Coyotes, which is probably the same goal today. I hope so. Um, and after all, and always after it, um, getting in those ice cold, freezing ice baths. I remember that too. Um, the Division II Bison Track and Field era was awesome and successful and a lot of fun. I was thankful to be a part of it and to be up here. It's a great honor. Um, and just to close, um, again, talking about Andy, um, thank you, Mark, for your perfect message. Um, that was her speaking through that. Um, it was, it truly was. I mean, the, the ways he said it was, was exactly how she would say it, so I know. Andy helped him write that, I know it. And um, she was a life-giving person that poured out of her. We were fortunate to be roommates for three years and um, teammates all those years. Um, I still grieve that she's not with us and celebrate her legacy as is being done today and thank you for that. And her legacy lives brightly and beautifully through her, um, her kids and, and through her husband, so. Thank you for this celebration. Um, NDSU Bison Athletics, thank you. I truly love you, and um, this is a tremendous honor. So thank you. Go Bison. Our next inductee, a member of the first NDSU women's soccer team to qualify for the NCAA tournament in 1999, helping lead the Bison to a 14-3-2 record that season. She set an NDSU record with five goals in a single match and holds three of the top four single season marks for points and goals, including a school record, 37 points and 15 goals in 1999 that both still rank second in Bison history. NDSU's career leader with 122 points on 50 goals and 22 assists. She led the Bison in points and goals in 1996, 1999, and 2000, and tied for the team lead in assists in 99. Her 14-game winning goals, her 14-game winning goals were an NDSU record and still ranks second in school history. 
a two-time All-Central Region selection as a freshman and a junior. She was the 1996 North Central Conference Freshman of the Year and was named to the All-NCC team in 98-99. Born and raised in Sioux Falls, she graduated from Lincoln High School and earned a degree in Business Administration from NDSU. She has worked in Wealth Management and Trust since 2004. She coaches for the Dakota Lions Soccer Club in Sioux Falls, where she lives with her husband, Dale, and their two daughters, Ellie and Ava. We proudly welcome to the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame, Nicole Vandenboss Hurt. to start by congratulating all my fellow inductees. It's an honor to be part of this accomplished group of uh, athletes and coaches. Congrats to you all. Um, I want to start, I want to also want to thank all the people who have helped me get to this day. First, thank you to the entire NDSU athletic staff, past and present, for building, helping build the Bison legacy. Thank you to my parents for driving me across the Midwest, chasing a soccer ball and getting to play the, the game that I love. Now having two daughters, I know the sacrifices that this took. Thank you. Thank you for my in-laws for being here. They supported me and the Bison soccer back then and continue to support me and my family today. I also want to thank all of the other friends and family here today. A big thank you to my Bison teammates who are here in attendance. One of my first memories was my very first day of fall camp 1996. We met in a small classroom in the Benson Bunker Field House to go over what the first day would look like. One of those first events involved the two mile run. Now we had been told to prepare for this run and had spent the summer training. What we hadn't been told was that we would be running on the Fargo Dome parking lot in, the, in about 90 degrees. And there was a very distinct strong smell in the air. I later found out that was sugar beets. Being from South Dakota, I had no idea what that was. But I thought, okay, great. So anyone who spent time um, on campus in the fall knows that smell. Um, back to the run. The rules were, were, were simple. If you completed the two miles in 14 minutes, you didn't have to test again. As we were all trying to recover from our run, I felt for the first time the feeling of team and family. As we all encouraged each other and shared the limited amount of shade the Fargo Dorm Marquee provided, I knew I'd found my home. I was going to love being a bison. I did pass the test, by the way, just in case you're curious. Um, my first game as a bison was on our home field at Cardinal Munch. Anyone know where that is? Yeah, I didn't think so. We played Jamestown, and I started as an outside midfielder, but somehow I found myself in front of the forwards and in front of the goal more than um, in the midfield. Um, I probably didn't play much defense either. I wasn't really known for that. <laughs> um, not surprising at halftime of the game, Renee Hawkins, any of those who, who remember her, she was playing forward and the coach switched us at halftime. Um, this was probably a good switch because Renee loved to run and I didn't like to play defense, so it was a win-win. The spring of 97 brought more examples of bison culture and the mutual love and respect for NDSU and the city of Fargo. The flood of 97. Wow, what an unforgettable event. I think they even made a song about it, if anyone remembers and was around for that. Maybe not. Um, even as a 19-year-old, I knew the seriousness of this event. Classes were canceled, practices were on hold, and, as we, and it was all hands on deck to fill sandbags. I can re recall standing on a wooden pallet with water running under my feet, sandwiched between football players, many of them lifelong friends and some of them here today. My role was simple, stand with your arms out, Wait for a sandbag to be launched into your chest and hold it long enough for someone to take it out. <laughs> Picture this, I'm 5'7", 135 pounds, and I have a guy named Bubba slamming a 50-pound sandbag into my chest. All sports, male and female, coming together for one common goal. This is what Bison Pride is to me. Other memories I have in my time at NDSU include playing our home games on a seminary off campus, that's Cardinal Munch, to sharing the track complex, um, with, uh, with the track, thanks Coach Larson. Um, playing the, making the NCAA playoffs in 1999, only five short years after the sport was, was varsity sport. 
sharing the weight room with other sports and going from having a dry erase board to actually having a strength coach assigned to us. Ice baths and seeing how many soccer girls we could fit in one tub. I mean, for the record, the football team all had their own, but whatever, I'm not keeping score. Um, <laughs> the outstanding care we received from our trainers and student trainers, the many bus trips and the first time I ever flew was as a, was as a bison, uh, making lifelong friends who would drop anything to help if in need, meeting my husband, Dale, all of these things while receiving a great education preparing me for the future. I want to again thank, thank you for this honor of being included with this amazing class of inductees. I can't thank NDSU enough for taking a kid from Sioux Falls, South Dakota and welcoming her into the bison community and Fargo. The saying really is true, once a bison, always a bison. Lastly, thank you to my amazing husband and best friend for his support back then, even though he showed up at halftime of most of my games and slept for the other part. <laughs> I'm thankful for, on a daily basis, for his examples of strength, loyalty, and love. This is Bison Pride. Thank you. Go Bison. Our next inductee, middle distance runner, was just getting started when he won the 800 meters for the 1998 Minnesota State Championship team from Morris Area High School. He went on to a seven-time All-American career at NDSU, including a national runner-up finish in the 800 meters and a fifth place finish in the 1600 meter relay at the 2002 NCAA indoor meet. His third place finish in the 800 at the 2004 NCAA outdoor championship helped the Bison to a third place finish in the team standings, the best showing by the NDSU men's team at the national meet. A 10 time North Central Conference champion, he won four titles in the 800 meters and was a six time conference winner in the relays. He won back to back 800 meter indoor titles in 2001 and 2002 and was a three time champ in, at the 2002 NCC indoor meet, counting wins in the four by 400 relay and the four by 800 relay. His 4x800 relay team won three straight NCC indoor titles, capped by a school record time of 7 minutes, 40.61 seconds, that has stood since 2002. He also ran on the distance medley relay that held the NDSU indoor record for 10 years. Outdoors, he ran on two school record setting 4x800 relay teams in the 2000 and 2002 Drake relays and was a member of three of the top five outdoor 3,200 meter relays in school history. A graduate of the NDSU electrical engineering program, he transitioned to a career in medicine. She's an engineer and a doctor, a little more ambitious than I was in school. He's board certified podiatrist and is a fellow of the American College of Foot and Ankle Surgeons. He has worked as a podiatrist since 2011 in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, where he lives with his wife, Rachel, and two children, Garrett and Miles. Interestingly enough, I found out Andrew was inducted into the Hall of Fame by just a random chance meeting where he was hanging out with about eight different University of North Dakota grads in the summer of June 2020, so he'll have to explain that to you. Welcome to the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame, Andrew Mullen. This is pretty sweet. There's a bunch of stud athletes out here and in this class, that's pretty awesome. So I'm honored to be a part of this uh, Hall of Fame group. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's super humbling to be, uh, to be considered, uh, you know, among people that run in the Olympics, you know, we're all over the place. So the Bison crew is good and fantastic. And we, uh, I like that uh, speech by uh, Mark that, uh, UND is looking at us, that makes me happy, Beck and Kyle. So, before we get started, I was uh, encouraged to not forget about my wife, Rachel, um, stud athlete herself. So she was a track star back in the day with us, um, hammered it out, and 
made a nice life, and apparently we've been married 17 years, so we're all, uh, <laughs> right, right, yeah, that's good, that's good, cool. But besides Rachel, I've always ran with a pretty good crew, so um, the last time we traveled like this um, it was one of the national meets, and I'll get to that in a little bit when we do the memories part. But for 10 years, I was thinking about this, so 10 years, I basically dedicated my life to track and field, and I couldn't have thought that anything was really more important. Now, Brian mentioned that I must be, I don't know, dedicated a student to something. We, some of us know that's not the case, just uh, <laughs> good at taking tests, apparently. So, uh, <laughs> so 10 years, all I cared about was track and field, running and training. Uh, and we had so many just awesome, 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 awesome stories, events, gatherings, championships, that uh, we've really molded together just lifelong friendships. So track and field is a strange sport, right? I've described this to a few people. Track is athletes that can't figure out a playbook. So uh, <laughs> we're all stubborn, stubborn-minded, mostly listen to the coaches, sometimes listen to the coaches. But uh, yeah, I don't think we, uh, we could really put it together for a, a playbook, a play, a <laughs> <laughs> a relay is as close as we can get. But for such an individual sport where we line up on a line, look down the line and say, I'm going to win, and that's about all the game planning we have, I've developed some pretty awesome friendships and a pretty awesome crew that uh, <laughs> travel from all over the place to hang out with me today. So that's awesome. Thanks, guys, for coming. So back to the... Uh, the stories. So Nicole talked about their first day of practice, and it's almost identical to cross-country practice when you show up. So we know that we're going to run. So when I rolled in, I was feeling pretty good about myself. I just won a state championship, and I was thinking, man, I had an awesome summer of training. So we gathered at the BSA pretty much uh, in this spot right here, and we we're going to go for a training run. So we're sitting around in a circle and, you know, feeling pretty confident. I have a little bit of problem with confidence. People, <laughs> we probably all have a little problem with confidence in this room, but uh, we're all uh, sitting around and I'm thinking, okay, state champ, no big deal. Pretty much every other freshman that was sitting in that same circle was a state champ from whatever state they came from. So Lars had a nice pull. Pretty much all of them were faster than me. Pretty much all of them were better than me that day. And so... There was a hazing ritual that uh, instead of the coaches hammering you to a 14-minute uh, deal, what they did is they jogged us out somewhere east of Moorhead, about five miles out, and then hammered it on the way back. And so whoever was in shape knew the way back to the BSA, and whoever wasn't in shape got to walk and figure out the side roads of uh, northeast Fargo. <laughs> but that's really how we develop these friendships and these, you know this good group of guys. So Brett and Jason and Luke and Smock, everybody kind of, we're all here today. But the last time we did that, we uh, were out in Boston, Massachusetts. So Rachel and the girls and Jill and Andy, they won the national championship as a team. Um, and that was, if we all think about back to our athletic careers, we, at some point in our lives, at some point in our career, we were really just hitting on all cylinders. And that's when I was hitting it, and I was super confident. I thought, this is, I'm going here, and I'm going to win the national championship. And that was the goal and the focus and laser beam focus. And my parents kind of learned the hard way that I wasn't a very good sport when I didn't get what I wanted. And they learned to... <laughs> not say good job if I didn't think it was a good job. And that day we uh, hammered on it, came around the back stretch, pretty sure I had it locked up down the home stretch and then got edged at the line. So we got lots of, uh, lots of good jobs, good job, good job. But I, you know, probably stomped around and was some sort of a bad athlete, bad sport that we shouldn't talk about. My dad didn't say good job. Good job, Dad. <laughs> but we had a great time. And then we got back 
to the airport, and I still remember this. We get off the airport, you know, we had a pretty good crew. The girls won the national championship. Everybody was good. Jason Breitzman, Hall of Famer, <laughs> comes up and say, that sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get it. And so, like, everybody in this room, I assume, has that same attitude, right? We wouldn't get to where we want to be unless we have that attitude. And we don't always say it, and so this is kind of a weird place to kind of talk in front of a group of people and talk about, you know, what it takes and why we get to these spots. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where this strange inner competitive streak comes from. So it's probably from my family. My parents, uh, we always grew up playing board games and, I don't know, all sorts of random stuff. Still to this day, it's pretty high energy, high intensity. Everyone wants to beat me, which is awesome. <laughs> so, and that's kind of carried through life. For whatever reason, I'm the guy that uh, let's race him, let's beat him, and push back. So I, so I love it. So Luke and I will probably have a game of cribbage tonight for dollars if anyone wants to play. <laughs> but taking even a step back further in time, it's super cool. Randy Lussenden, he's class of uh, 1992. Um, he's from my hometown, my parents' friends, right? Him and my dad conspired when I was a ninth grader that probably a 100-pound ninth grader wasn't going to do so great in the football field and got me out for cross country. And so we had a whole bunch of awesome influences that kind of bumped us along and brought me along. And I don't know how it ended up to, they say, why track and field? Well, because I'm super skinny and <laughs> whatever. But we got into this sport and Ryan Godfrey was awesome. You know, we kind of came up together. He was a grad assistant my first year in charge of the distance crew. And we had, uh, yeah, his coaching style, my training style all worked together. And our whole crew that's here today, you know, it was a, it's a little different coach-athlete relationship in the track and field world. Um, sometimes it's hit these splits, do this workout. But a lot of times it's messing with our brains, <laughs> planning, strategizing, getting things sorted out. So appreciate Ryan and Lars for dragging the most out of me, Rachel, the rest of our crew here. I think we've all done pretty dang well in life. And, and the lessons that you learn with athletics, but track and field and distance running specifically, it's endurance over a race, but endurance over every single day. So get up, do it, go to bed, get up and do it again. And uh, eventually you make it a career. So it's come full circle. I got to watch my boys, Garrett and Miles, race cross country last night. They did awesome. Both hammered down the stretch, which I was super proud of. So, all right, full circle, go Bison. Somebody make sure he brings that home. Thank you. Well, the Rams, I say that word, everybody pretty much knows what that means when you talk about North Dakota State football, a great tradition of offensive linemen over the years. And this guy still looks like he could be playing. Every time I walk by him, I almost want to crawl in the fetal position. I'm worried he's going to pancake me. Considered one of the top offensive linemen in the North Central Conference, four-year starter, was a cornerstone and offensive line that blocked for the school, school's all-time leading rusher. I remember his name, Lamar Gordon. He made starts at three different positions his freshman year in 1999, playing right guard, left tackle, and right tackle in front of that Bison Hall of Famer that we talked about, Lamar Gordon. Named to the All-America second team at left tackle as a sophomore in 2000, he helped the Bison do a 12-2 record and a national semifinal appearance that year. He was a two-time All-North Central Conference honoree and a two-time All-Region pick. He started 36 of 37 career games played, including 29 straight before a knee injury ended his senior season, and was selected to participate in the Rotary Gridiron Classic College All-Star Game. 
He was invited to the 2003 NFL Combine and went on to play in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns in 2003 and 4 before heading over to NFL Europe with the Rain Fire in 2004 in Germany. As a member of the local El Zagel Shriners Club, he helped organize the North Dakota Shrine Bowl All-Star football game for several years and has served as vice president and now president of the Bison Football Players Association. A product of Mayport CG High School in Mayville, North Dakota, he graduated from NDSU in 2002 with a degree in Management Information Systems and currently resides in West Fargo with his wife Sally and three children, Josie, Maya, and Bennett. We proudly present for induction into the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame, Chuck Clabo. Thank you very much. Um, what a humbling honor this is. This university and football program have done far more for me than I have ever done for them. I would like to start off by thanking the Athletic Department and the Hall of Fame Committee for this award. I also want to congratulate the rest of the 2021 class. It's a privilege to be a part of this group. I'm proud to say that my bison journey began very early. My father, Brad, had played basketball here in the late 60s. I remember our family driving down to Fargo for a few games each year. Basketball, football, it didn't matter. The stands were always packed and the fans were passionate. I remember truly becoming a fan in mid-February of 1989. I was in the third grade. While in the Minneapolis airport, Coach Raggy Hager was seated at our gate. My father approached him and we introduced ourselves. Coach Hager was all class. He was the head football coach at NDSU, taking time to speak to a nine-year-old boy, asking all about our trip, school, sports. I was in awe of meeting someone like him. When we got off the plane in Fargo, Coach Hager sought us out and handed us his business card with a handwritten note on the back. Good for one free ticket to a game that fall. That fall, we did attend a couple football games. I just couldn't understand why my dad wouldn't let me use that card to get in. Save it, he kept saying. 30 years later, I fully understand. That was the beginning, and I still have that card. Now, the moral of this story for the football coaches in the room is don't sleep on the 130-pound third graders. <laughs> so I was a pretty big kid, to say the least. When I reflect on my athletic career, I'm blessed to have had so many people in my corner. People that believed in me, encouraged me, and challenged me to chase a better version of myself. To do everything the right way, not the easy way. I would like to thank my offensive line coach, Bruce Somm, who's sitting with us today. He basically took a raw high school basketball player and built me into a college football player. Coach Somm pushed me, challenged me, and most importantly, believed in me. For that, I am forever grateful. I truly do feel blessed to have had so many great coaches in my corner, coaches that have taught me as much about life as they have about football. I would like to thank my teammates. I was fortunate to learn from, play alongside, and block for some of the very best. I remember the daily battles and practice with the defense. Playing next to Paul Keller and Jared Peck for so long, few calls were ever spoken aloud. We made each other better every day. I remember how Lamar Gordon could make one hard cut and run right by everyone. I remember the leadership that our QBs, RJ and Gorder, provided. I remember all our great times off the field. I can remember a lot. The years flew by, but the memories will always remain. When it's over, you just hope you made a difference with the guys that came after you. Jill mentioned earlier remembering the ice baths. So that's definitely something I'm still trying to suppress. I'd like to thank my siblings. It was a childhood where we were always together. It was a household where we were either in the field, helping out, or competing at something. You name the sport, we would play it. Those backyard games were competitive and spirited, but to this day, we have never stopped rooting for each other. I would like to thank Sally's parents, Bob and Sue Peterson. They are wonderful people that have supported us along the way treating me like a son and attending more games and events than one can count. 
To my parents, Brad and Marcia, thank you for always being there, for providing me with all the opportunities you could, for instilling in me the drive, work ethic, and commitment to give everything my best. I love you and thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would like to thank my wife, Sally. She has been through it all. We will celebrate our 20th anniversary next year. We probably dated for another 10 to 15 before that. She is smart, strong, and a wonderful mother. I also know I'm fortunate to have found someone that enjoys football even more than I do. Sally and I are blessed, I'm sorry, to have three children, Josie, Maya, and Bennett. Our life now revolves around bringing them to their games and their activities. We wouldn't have it any other way. I love you all. Lastly, in 2016, I became part of a group that wanted to help promote and encourage camaraderie amongst the former players. The Bison Football Players Association was born, the BFPA for short. Fast forward six years, we now have over 455 members across 36 states. It's a selfless, nonprofit organization that uses our platform to help families that are in need. This is a group that I could not be prouder to be a part of. It's also a great example of how special a place like NDSU is. The founding principle of this group is simple. Once a bison, always a bison. Thank you again for this honor. Go Bison. I'm so glad our next inductee decided to bring back the mustache that he's portraying in this photo. It is truly a legendary situation all the way around for Don Larson. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And honestly, before we kind of get into that, I can't even picture what it's going to be like without Don and Desiree around here. You walk in and you just see them everywhere. And it's been that way for four decades. I don't even know what that's going to be like. It's just, it's crazy. But what an amazing run for Don. Competing for conference rival South Dakota State. I don't know what made that, <laughs> made the wrong decision there. Captured two All-American honors in the 400-meter intermediate hurdles, along with seven North Central Conference championships and three league records. He is a native of Madison, South Dakota, earning a physical education degree at SDSU and completing his master's degree at MSU Moorhead before starting his coaching career at Concordia. 41 years he spent as the head coach at NDSU with men's track and field and cross country, leading the Bison to 55 conference championships in the North Central Conference and Summit League. Amazing. The Bison successfully reclassified from Division II, winning three Division I independent outdoor titles and one cross country championship. His track and field teams never finished lower than third in a conference meet. He coached six individual competitors who combined for 14 national championships and led the Bison to seven top 10 finishes at the NCAA Division II or Outdoor Championships, including a third place finish in 2004 before reclassifying to Division I. NDSU won 21 North Central Conference outdoor titles, including a conference record 13 straight from 87 to 99. The Bison won 11 of 12 Summit League outdoor crowns before his retirement. He led 14 teams to NCC indoor titles and finished as high as fourth at the NCAA Indoor Championship in 1989, plus fifth place finishes in 1994 and 2004. At the Division I level, his teams won eight of 13 Summit League indoor titles. An 18 times Summit League Coach of the Year, 18. He earned 60 Coach of the Year honors at the conference, regional, and national levels, including a sweep of the Division II Indoor and Outdoor National Coach of the Year awards in 2004. He was the 1998 recipient of South Dakota State's Ralph Ginn Award for coaching excellence and was inducted into the Howard Wood Dakota Relays Hall of Fame. He is slated for induction into the United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association Hall of Fame this coming December. His wife, Desiree, held assistant coaching duties in the high jump for 20 years at NDSU, and the couple has two daughters, Kelsey and Kira. And what made Lars so special, really, to me, was really nothing about how he coached. Every time you walk in, outdoor track, the shack, the old Bison Sports Arena, 
the Elig Indoor Complex. Lars wasn't coaching, he was moving stuff. He was picking up hurdles, he was sweeping the track off. He was selling dipping dots to my six-year-old at Bison basketball games. He was doing everything that he would never ask anybody else to do something he was not willing to do himself. And I think that's why here in everybody's respect and he took care of so many things. And he also offered a lot of great advice to pretty much everybody over the years, whether you were a student athlete of his or just somebody you got to know working with him over the years. And when my daughter was two, I was sitting with her at a Bison basketball game once and I'll never forget him telling me this. He looked me in the eyes and he said, Brian, someday when you walk her down the aisle, make sure you're not, she's not just thanking you for paying for the wedding. And that has stuck with me, you know, all these years. So, Don, you're an amazing guy and definitely deserving of this and we're gonna miss you and Desiree here. Don Larson, Beisel and Athletic Hall of Fame. Thanks, Matt. Uh, what was that advice? Be brief, be good, and be gone. Uh, uh, there's no truth to the rumor Matt Larson is not my little brother. A lot of people were concerned when we hired the first day. They thought, oh, God, we've got two of those guys around here now. Um, uh, you know, there's several people that um, have been a big influence on my, in my life, particularly at NDSU. Um, uh, my first day on the job, I meet Bucky. And I've heard, you know, you hear a lot of stories about Bucky and, and things um, about the time that they were leaving for a wrestling at South Coast State, and I tried to tell them the interstate's closed and they got stranded at the summit for four days. Um, but uh, Bucky cornered me and right away said, first thing you need to do, you need to go over and talk to people in financial aid, you people in the housing, people in food service, and get acquainted with these people. And probably the best thing I ever did was get involved with the people across campus. Um, and uh, it really made a difference, the people uh, on campus uh, for recruiting, uh, for financial aid and things like that. Um, you know, fortunately for me, having spent 43 years here, um, the number of people that I met and were influenced. And being the track coach at North Coast State um, at the 84 or 83 National Outdoor Meet, I met my future wife. She was head coach at Angelo State. Uh, the head coach at St. Cloud State was chair of the NCAA Coaches Committee, and he put us on a jury together. Well, one thing led to another, and, and uh, got her to move out of Texas, Michigan State grad. Um, uh, you and Kirk Gibson didn't work out, right? Yeah, probably not, yeah. So, um, so anyway, and I uh, was fortunate. We got married in 84. And we decided to live in Fargo, great assistant coach. Um, probably the best walleye fisherman on the planet um, and tutored by Dan Fabian, a uh, longtime coach at Roseau, grad assistant in 84. And uh, Dan is, uh, is uh, uh, Kira's godfather. And uh, um, so anyway, um, we, Got married. I married a fisherman. My wife married a cook. Uh, but anyway, our my special guests today certainly are um, my family, uh, my sister Donna, who's here from Seattle, um, and uh, my daughter Kelsey. Um, Kelsey, um, volleyball player, played at Northwest Missouri under, um, and uh, had an internship under the legendary Mel Churchman. Mel Churchman, a longtime coach in Northwest Missouri, best friends with Rocky Hager. Rocky Hager is Kelsey's godfather. And when Northeastern came back and played, I think he spent more time with Kelsey than he did involved in the football operations. And that really made a difference. Um, and uh, Kelsey finished a degree um, and uh, was a nurse in uh, pediatric oncology um, and now works um, in the ER at Children's Mercy in Kansas City. And um, her husband, Luke, um, was a baseball player, met him, and the uh, way it looks, I'll eventually be a farmhand for Luke when they uh, move back to Nebraska. Um, my uh, daughter, Kira, um, and uh, 
And uh, here, um, Fear was a pretty decent athlete, uh, now a marathon runner, trained by uh, Tom Stambaugh, former NDSU athlete. Kira, Kira actually graduated from the Sinclair School of Nursing, University of Missouri, became the first team sport athlete in school history uh, to graduate in nursing, played on the U.S. national volleyball team, played professionally in Italy, and is a currently a nurse at uh, Missouri Baptist in uh, St. Louis. And uh, her godfather happens to be Dan Fabian, my grad assistant. Uh, from 84, uh, spent four terms in the House of Representatives of Minnesota, currently the mayor of Minnesota and probably one of the best walleye fishermen on the planet. Uh, we've spent uh, many, many days um, in, in the boat together. Um, you know, uh, my, my family was, was greatly influenced by, by track athletes and stuff, people that they looked up to. Um, and certainly for, um, for Kelsey, it was Arden Beachy, and I think Arden played a big role in you becoming a nurse. And uh, just, you know, he's one of those great guys. The only thing is that there was too big of an age difference. She was really disappointed when Arden got married. Of course, she was like five at the time and things. And, uh, and uh, so, um, anyway, uh, with... Uh, Getting involved in track and field, you know, I actually student taught in elementary, and I had an opportunity to replace Steve Berseth. Steve Berseth was an NDSU graduate in Brookings. He was going to move to the high school. There was a hiring freeze. So I had an opportunity to go to Concordia of Moorhead for a one-year intern position. So I went to Concordia, and one year turned into three. Um, and Bruce Whiting had left NDSU, and I had an opportunity to come to NDSU, and Actually, uh, the legendary Sonny Galsvig, those of you who have been around long enough know Sonny. Sonny was the, not only the offensive line coach, he was the head basketball coach and assistant baseball coach. We all had multiple sorts. I was assistant football coach and head men and women's cross country coach. Everybody had multiple positions there. Well, Sonny was working in Irving in her summer basketball camp here at NDSU, and uh, Dr. Sponberg cornered him and said, that, you know, hey, what can you tell me about this Larson kid? And Sonny politely said, hire the guy and get him out of my house. I'd been living with Sonny for three years. And, uh, but, but, and Sonny was the reader, ended up being the reader at our wedding. And he had the minister in the congregation laughing so hard they barely can continue. But for me, my whole life has been centered around people that made such a big influence. And the people that made influences on me, you know, uh, family members. Uh, my, my sister Donna's here. And... Uh, came all the way from, well, between Arizona and Seattle. And, and both of my nieces were supposed to be here, but they had flight problems and things. And uh, um, I, uh, anyway, fortunately, Aide Sponberg hired me, and I learned the key to being a great head coach. Hire great assistants and stay the hell out of their way. And uh, Coach Keller and I have had an amazing relationship. He was a former athlete, and Stevie now is the head for both men and women. Here um, and I was fortunately able to recruit athletes, and I know several of them are here. Um, but when I, you know, I run down through the list of people who come through: John Bodine, Steph Wine, Tom Lloyd, Doug Hanson, Tom Stamboa, Riley Dolezal, Peyton Otterdahl, and on and on and on. But it, it wasn't just the coach; it was people on campus: the the Bob Pieris, the Alan Callmeyers, the Dave Buchan, Kelly Lehman, people like that. And as a recruiting example, I remember taking one of our top recruits um, over to Bob Peary. Bob Peary's in mechanical engineering. And, and then waiting in the hall, and after about an hour and a half visit, and they said their goodbyes and whatever, and we're coming back to the Vitamin Sports Arena, and the kid's dad goes, why would you want to go anyplace else? Well, that, that's, that's with North Dakota State. Um, it's been my home for 43 years. Um, a couple of the... You know, you, I, I can't get up here and not talk track stories and things. Um, the type of athletes that we had, we're running the conference meet at NDS New Athletic Outdoor Complex, and I've got Jared Esler and, uh, and Nate Schmidt. And Nate Schmidt's a multiple national champion, All-American. Um, Jared Esler, a great football player, sprinter, NCAA postgrad scholar. And we're ready to run the finals of the 4 by one The girls are in their starting blocks, and um, Nate is high jumping, lands funny in the pit, can't stand up. 
Well, he runs third on our four by one. And we don't have anybody else warmed up since Andy Ockery. Now, Andy Ockery also became an NC postgrad scholar, just finished in a triple jump. He's never run a four by one before. So, so anyway, so Jared calls him over and says, hey, what are we going to do? I'm just going to have Andy anchor for me. We'll have him give him 30 steps and be fine. Now, Andy's never run a four by one. And if you've watched the, some of the American teams in the Olympics and goof up a handoff and think, and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, this is. And so I look over at Andy, he's got a piece of tape about the size of a quarter on the track. You know, most sprinters have two pieces of tape about four feet long. He says, Andy, can you see this thing? He goes, yeah, I'm fine, coach. And I'm like, okay. I mean, these guys are both NCAA postgrad scholars. So I'm standing over by the fence. Well, not only do they win, but they break the conference record. And I get a lot of credit for coaching people like this. Um, <laughs> um, you know, um, and probably one of the, the, the more unique athletes I ever, ever coached was uh, Ryan McClinn, a uh, kid from Stephen Argyle. Um, home visit on Easter Sunday. Got in trouble for not bringing my wife. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we're down at the Drake Relays um, in, in a pole vault competition. We were college division, but field events uh, is uh, the open pole vaults at college and universities. Of course, the weather's switching. Um, it's raining. Wind switch, you're vaulting into a headwind. Bars at 17 feet and change. And Ryan first trip down the runway and makes it in flying colors. And he's standing over me by the sidelines and stuff. And the guys from Texas and Kansas and UTEP, they're throwing poles and cussing and whatever. And he goes, it would be a nice day in Stephen. <laughs> you know, and, you know, fortunately for me, um, I, for 40 years, I had the greatest job in the world. But there comes a point in time when you need to turn things over. And we had some young coaches that had come in doing a, uh, you know, doing a great job. And uh, I know Stevie's recruited a couple more. Um, but personally, I, I, you know, between my family, Coach Keller, uh, the athletic administration, um, Matt Larson, um, and, and, and the boosters. And I, and I look around the crowd, and I, I, I knew that a lot of alums were coming, but I, I had no idea that this many. And I'm really looking forward to our uh, thing downtown later. So... Thank you very much, and go Bison. Going that way. Well, there are your eight new inductees into the 49th class of the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame. Please direct your attention to the video screens and join the NDSU Concert Choir in singing The Yellow and the Green. And now it is our pleasure to unveil the names of the 2021 Bison Athletic Hall of Fame class in the permanent display here at the Sanford Health Athletic Complex. Thank you all for coming today. As we conclude today's ceremony, we ask all of the Athletic Hall of Fame inductees from today to please meet on the stage immediately following the ceremony with your awards for a group photo. Can someone make sure that Andy brings his award on stage? 
And a reminder for everybody, please join us for the NDSU homecoming parade this evening in downtown Fargo. The parade begins at 5.30 p.m. on Broadway between NP and 4th Avenue. Tomorrow at 11 a.m., the Bison volleyball team, it's a busy weekend, I'm sure everybody knows. Volley Bison volleyball team will be in action hosting Omaha at the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse, followed by a 1 p.m. kickoff for the Bison football team against Northern Iowa at the Fargo Dome. And on Sunday, the Bison soccer team closes out homecoming weekend with a 1 p.m. match against another state school located 80 miles north of here on Dakota Field. Thank you for attending today, and once again, congratulations to all the new members of the Bison Athletic Hall of Fame. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you.